Daniel's final vision, chapters 10, 11 and 12 in the book of Daniel, describes a series of conflicts between the unnamed king of the north and king of the south leading to the time of the end, when Israel will be vindicated and the dead raised to shame or glory. The book of Daniel was written in reaction to the persecution of the Jews by the Greek king Antiochus IV Epiphanes in 167-164 BCE. Its authors were the Maskal, the wise, of whom Daniel is one. Those among the people who are wise shall make many understand, and its fundamental theme is God's control over history. The climax comes with the prophecy of the resurrection of the dead. Chapter 7 spoke of the coming kingdom of heaven, but Daniel chapters 10 to 12 does not say that history will end with the coming of the Jewish kingdom, rather, the wise will be brought back to life to lead Israel in the new kingdom of God. In contemporary Christian millennialism, Daniel chapter 11 verses 36 to 45 is interpreted as a prophecy of the career and destruction of the Antichrist, and Daniel chapter 12 as concerning the salvation of Israel and the coming kingdom of Christ. Summary Chapter 10 Prologue Daniel sees a vision of a man who tells him that he is currently engaged in a battle with the prince of Persia, in which he is assisted by Michael, your prince. He must soon return to the combat, but first he will tell Daniel what is written in the Book of Truth, Chapter 11 Vision Report. The angel continues, There will be four kings of Persia, and the last will make war on Greece. After him will come a great king, and that king's empire will be broken up. There will be wars and marriages between the kings of the south and the north, and the king of the north will desecrate the temple and set up the abomination that causes desolation. At the end time there will be a war between the king of the south and the king of the north, and the king of the north will meet his end between the sea and the holy mountain. Chapter 12 Epilogue at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise, there will be great distress. But those Jews whose names are written will be saved, the dead will awaken to everlasting shame or life. Daniel asks how long it will be before these things are fulfilled and is told. From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1,335 days. Composition The Daniel who appears as the hero of the book of Daniel never existed, but the authors reveal their true identity at the end of Daniel chapter 12. They are the maskal, the wise, of whom Daniel is one. Those among the people who are wise shall make many understand. The actual background to the book was the persecution of the Jews by the Greek, King Antiochus IV Epiphanes in 167-164 BCE. And there is a broad consensus that the book was completed shortly after that crisis ended. The first six chapters are folk tales dating from the late Persian, early Hellenistic period, while the visions of chapters 7 to 12 date from between 167 to 164. A probable outline of the composition is as follows. An original collection of folk tales, currently chapters 1 to 6. Addition of chapter 7 and revision of the earlier chapters. Further revision and the addition of chapters 8 to 12. Daniel is episodic rather than linear. It has no plot as such. It does, however, have a structure. Chapters 2 to 6 form a chiasm, a literary figure in which elements mirror each other. Chapter 2 is the counterpart of chapter 7, chapter 3 of chapter 6, and chapter 4 of chapter 5, with the second member of each pair advancing the first in some way. Daniel chapter 8 is then a new beginning, and the single vision contained in chapters 10 to 12 advances that argument further and gives it more precision. Within the three chapters of Daniel chapters 10 to 12, Daniel chapter 10 serves as prologue, chapter 11 as the report of the angelic vision, and chapter 12 as the epilogue. The unit begins with a third-person introduction, then switches to Daniel speaking in his own voice as one of the two primary characters, his angelic partner being the second. This is probably the angel Gabriel, although he is never identified. 
Then follows Daniel chapter 11, the Book of Truth. Much of the history it recounts is accurate, down to the two successive Syrian invasions of Egypt in 170 and 168 BCE. But the final verses are not there was no third war between Egypt and Syria, and Antiochus did not die in Palestine. The failure of prophecy helps pinpoint the date of composition. The author knows of the desecration of the temple in December 167, but not of its rededication or of the death of Antiochus. Both in late 164, Daniel chapter 12 verse 11 12's countdown of days remaining to the end time differs from that in Daniel chapter 8, and were most likely added after the original prediction failed to eventuate. Genre and themes. The vision is an apocalypse in the form of an epiphany with an angelic discourse. The discourse forms an ex eventu prophecy, with close parallels with certain Babylonian works. The only true prophecy is the prediction of the death Antiochus, which is probably based on Ezekiel's prophecy of Gog and Magog. The heroes of Daniel chapters 11 to 12, the wise, are based on the suffering servant of Isaiah chapter 53. The fundamental theme of the book of Daniel is God's control over history. According to Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 8 to 9 God assigned each nation its own divine patron. Originally these were subordinate gods, but by the time Daniel came to be written they had been redefined as angels. In Daniel, Michael, the angel of Israel, is in battle with the prince of Persia, and this will be followed by further battle with the prince of Greece. The theological point being made is that the fate of nations is decided in heaven, not on earth. The same theme underlies the reference to the heavenly book of truth, which is about to be revealed to Daniel, and which supposedly forms the content of chapter 11. Both the past and the future are written already, and God is sovereign over all. The constant preoccupation of the vision chapters is Antiochus a replacement of the Tamid, the twice daily burnt offering to the God of Israel, by the abomination of desolation. The predicted reversal of the blasphemy will usher in the end of history. The theme of the four earthly kingdoms first introduced in Daniel chapter 2 and developed in Daniel chapter 7 and 8, they will be replaced by the kingdom of heaven, a kingdom in which Israel will be given domination over the world. The climax comes with the prophecy of the resurrection of the dead. Prior to the Babylonian exile, all the dead went to Sheol, irrespective of their good or bad deeds. But the idea that the righteous would be rewarded and the wicked punished began to appear in the 3rd century, and is clearly expressed in Daniel chapter 12 verses 2 to 3. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Chapter 7 spoke of the coming kingdom of heaven, but Daniel chapters 10 to 12 does not say that history will end with the coming of the Jewish kingdom. Historical background Daniel's final vision is set in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia. This marks 70 years since Daniel's own captivity began, and thus the fulfillment of Jeremiah's prophecy that the exile would last 70 years. Chapter 11, the centerpiece of the Revelation, gives a broad sweep of history from the 6th century BCE to the 2nd, but the coverage is uneven. Two centuries of Persian history plus Alexander the Great's conquest and the breakup of his empire, over two and a half centuries of history, are covered in three verses, but the century and a half of wars between the Ptolemies of Egypt and the Seleucids of Syria receive 16 verses and the reign of Antiochus IV Epiphanes, which lasted less than 10 years, gets 25, verses 20 to 39. The bulk of the historically accurate verses deal with Antiochus, who reigned 175-164 BCE. Verse 21 describes him as the contemptible person to whom royal majesty has not been given, meaning that he came to the throne by questionable means. Verse 22 notes his removal of the high priest only as three, and verses 23-24 apparently refer to his liberality in scattering the spoils among his supporters.
verses 25 to 28, describe his first war with Egypt, in 170 BCE, in which he was largely but not entirely successful. In 169, on his way back to Syria, he stopped in Jerusalem to plunder the temple. In 168 Antiochus invaded Egypt again, but this time he was stopped by the Romans and forced to retreat. Verses 30-31 describe the events that followed. Passing once more through Jerusalem, Antiochus instituted a persecution of Jewish customs and religion, desecrated the temple, and established a garrison there. Verses 32-39 describe the response of the wise, and, the many. The wise suffer and die so that the many will understand. In time the faithful receive a little help. Verses 36 to 39 carry Antiochus a history to the cosmic plane, detailing the blasphemy of the tyrant who considered himself a demigod. He spoke astonishing things against the God of gods, and gave no heed to the God of his fathers. Verses 40 to 45 finish the chapter with the prophecy that Antiochus would make war once again against Egypt, and would die in Judea. In the event this did not happen, there was no third war and Antiochus died in Persia or in Babylon. Daniel and Christian Millennialism Christian Millennialism is the belief in the resurrection of the martyrs and the thousand-year rule with Christ, followed by general resurrection, the last judgment, and the creation of a new heaven and new earth in which the faithful will be vindicated. Most 21st century Catholics, Orthodox and Protestants do not hold millennialist beliefs but they remain strong among American evangelicals. A central role in the end-time drama is given to the figure of the Antichrist. Opposed to God and his plan, he is either or both a military, political enemy and, or a deceiver who seeks to lead the faithful from Christ. About a third of American evangelicals follow a form of millennialism known as dispensationalism. One important and representative dispensationalist work, Tim LaHaye and Ed Hinson's popular Bible prophecy commentary, interprets Daniel chapter 11 as a description of the reign of Antiochus as far as verse 36, where it switches to prophecy of the far future. The king of the north, from this verse onwards refers not to the second century Syrian king, but to the Antichrist. He will deceive the Jews, who will accept him as their promised Messiah and enable the temple to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. But he will not be a Jew and he will betray them. He will be a military conqueror, with his headquarters on the Temple Mount. And he will wage war through the Middle East and the world until he will be destroyed by the true Messiah as predicted in Daniel chapter 11 verse 45. Lahay and Heinzen go on to explain Daniel chapter 12, which tells how Israel's suffering will lead to its salvation and the millennial kingdom of Christ. Christian historicism treats Daniel chapters 10 to 12 as part of the unfolding symbolic narrative of the book of Daniel as a whole. The following table gives a more comprehensive overview of the place of these chapters in the prophetic plan as laid out in the book. Appendix Interpretations from the 1st to 19th centuries